before we had real-time 3D rendered characters, fancy VFX explosions, or superpower finishing moves, 3D graphics, charge of punch, even in low-end mobile devices with perspective, environment, and camera animations. We're going to set up the most basic 3D J2Me environment in this video and put our skills to the test. There is a lot of technical explanation to unpack, but what you need to know is that these devices could reach up to 30 or 60 frames per second, and the way they loaded the graphics, it's a little bit different than what we do today. This is the Sony Ericsson W600i, which was sold in the USA by Singular Carrier. So you can see the technical specs here, but what caught my attention on this device is the two superior soft keys at the top of the screen. And this is why we're picking this device because this is the only device that actually has a mobile gameplay based on this kind of keys. But I'll leave you with the technical specs for later. Please read the video description and download the URL that is attached there. And then unpack all of these folders on your desktop. For this, we're going to use Windows XP. And then the first folder contains the Java JDK 1.6. The installation is pretty straightforward. You can just click next, 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 and then restart your machine. Please read the blog about this because you can have more details than in this video. Next, we're going to target the second folder, which contains the J2Me wireless toolkit. And what this does is to install the actual engine that it's going to use the Java virtual machine to simulate all of our devices. In this case, we're going to work with the Sony Ericsson SDK. And this is important because this is what simulates all of the behaviors by reading the device's virtual properties. This is kind of like an emulator. Okay, now restart the PC and come to the third folder that you can see right here. I had to record with my phone because I don't have a proper screen recorder in my little XP machine. And there you will find the Sony Ericsson SDK. And once you click next, you're going to start installing this. It's going to ask you to stop any other applications running. And once you have no other applications running, then you can start your installation. It's going to ask you to locate the JDK folder. So that's important. And after that, it's going to start installing it's going to install the server, which is called um, uh, Sony Ericsson Service Something, and it's going to be installed natively in Windows XP. From there, you just click Finish, and then it's going to ask you to configure your firewall. This is important because if you do not allow the applications that the Sony Ericsson Development Kit has installed, no applications will run. So I, I want to show you that. You go to the control panel, scroll down to the Windows firewall, and up here, the tab where it says exceptions, you're going, you're going to click there, and then you're going to make sure that you have all of these specific applications allowed to, pa to pass through the firewall. So you can add a program and then target the location, okay, by just clicking here in Browse. And in this case, you're going to target all of the uh, applications and I'm showing you here. You can also read them by name in the blog post. You're also going to add a port, the 6060 port. So that's uh, required for this to work. And you're also going to allow the emulator Exeter XC, but from the Sony Ericsson Java Me SDK location. Okay, so once you accept and add all of these exceptions. Also make sure that all of your java.exe, uh, the KT toolbar, which is actually the emulator, are allowed through the firewall. Nothing like this has been ever posted into YouTube. So this is a primer. What you're seeing right now has never been posted before. Next, don't forget that after setting up your Java environment, it is important that you define your Java home. Okay. This is the exact path you need to use because this is the default path. Everything is going to be related to this path. So make sure to add that environment 
uh, variable if, if, if you don't have it. Next in path, at the end, please add a semicolon and then this line right here. This needs to point to the bean folder specifically, otherwise it will not work. Um, after that, you can restart the PC once again, and then finally you can come here into start, and then you should see the default device selection and the K toolbar available for you after installing the Sony Ericsson SDK. So what we're going to do with the default device is to switch it to something that we're going to use. In this case, our physical device, which is the W600i um, phone. After that, you can come here into the K toolbar and let's start the Sonic Ericsson device tester, if we can call it that way, by opening this. Now, this is running on top of the original uh, wireless toolkit. So this is why it looks kind of different. From here, I'm going to open the project. As you can see right there, I selected the 3D mobile and now I'm going to select the device, which in our case is going to be the W600i. You can see it right there. And now you need to click here on build. This is important because it's going to compile and as they call it, they're going to um, prefix or something like that. They're going to do some um, library creations. Then click run. After that, this emulator window will pop up. My screen is a little bit small, so I need to resize the screen. But in case that your libraries, your visual libraries are not installed, please read the blog to know what I'm talking about. Um, you can just come here and move it to the right. So that way 90 degrees are rotating the emulator. And you can click any of the keys and the phone will work. This emulator has the properties of the physical phone, so that's why it works. So I just pressed that OK key and then the application or the midlet started to run. Now, the idea to start creating retro 3D games came from this page. One day I was you know, browsing the internet and I found out that it was possible to create a really simple 3D graphics inside any Java development uh, reading device, which in this case were older mobile phones. And the way you configure those settings are right here. So this company used to create 3D games back in the day and they defined for all of the people who were interested in this how to actually put a project, a 3MG project, M3G project, sorry, that's a format for Java games or, or rather 3D objects in Java. There are others, but we're going to get into that later on the series. Anyways, this is how you export from 3D Studio Max, which has the most complete M3G exporter from all of the 3D softwares from that era. Blender's M3G exported is broken. I might tell you that right away, and we're going to cover that in another video. Anyways, so that's how you get to read that. Please read the video description. The links are there. So the way the emulator or the WTK speaks to the device is through this connection proxy. It creates a kind of a gateway between your physical device and your simulation inside Windows XP. So this is just to show you how the directories were created, where the folders are located and how the general overall locations are displayed here. Here are the libraries which are required when creating the AAP and when using the you know AP calls inside the environment, the development environment, whether it's Eclipse or NetBeans. So yes, that's how this marvelous you know piece of software, archaeology software works. Uh, but how do we actually see what we're doing? We need a visual environment to create midlets. And for that, we're going to use NetBeans. You can also use Eclipse, but in this case, we're going to install NetBeans 6.8. And you need to select your uh, Java SE, Java Web, and Java Me, specifically Java Me, M-E, in order for this to work. Okay, so you can uncheck all of these other options that you see right here and then just click next. Click on I accept the terms, click next, 
and continue with the installation. It's going to tell you how much this space is going to take. I'm going to fast forward this. And once NetBeans is installed, just click finish. Um, you can restart the machine. Uh, I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to just start NetBeans. And the first thing you need to do once you come here is to come to tools and scroll down to plugins. In plugins, you need to go to the tab that says installed. In my case, I have already installed these, but you should see them grayed out. In this case, you need to select the ones that you are going to activate. It's going to be showing you this green check mark over here. Let me just scroll down a little bit. Again, my screen is a little bit small. And then you will have the activate button active. Uh, let me just show you by uh, selecting one of the features that is deactivated right now, the C++, as, and as you can see, the activate button becomes active. So that's the deal. You need to activate everything that you select with the Java Me, Java Base ID, um, the Java Web, and Java SE. So once you do all of that and activate it, just click close. NetBeans works like that. I, I don't, you know, I, I didn't design the GUI. Anyways, go to Java platforms. The next thing you need to do is to add the platform itself, the uh, Sony Ericsson JDK. So that's what we're going to do. You click here, add platform. And once you do that, it's going to ask you what kind of platform you're going to add. In this case, we're going to choose this one, Java Me MIDP platform emulator. Click next and it will automatically scan all known usual locations and it found out that the Sony Ericsson SDK has been installed. Again, pardon me because my screen is a little bit small. I need to drag this window, so just click Next. After that, it's going to um, search all of the libraries and the compatible AIPs, the dependencies, and everything. It's tied together with the properties for all of the devices. And this is what it's showing you right here. And it's showing you, hey, I found this two other you know, SDKs. Uh, you want me to add them? Yes. So just click Finish. And just like that, you're going to see two new options right there. One is specifically for the... Uh, debug on device, which is the physical device. And the second one is specifically for the emulator, the platform emulator. This is the one that we're interested in because we're going to virtually work with all of those other, uh, you know, Sony Ericsson devices. We're not going to buy a phone. Now, if you can see right here, this is the icon that tells you the proxy or the gateway uh, connection for the physical device is active. So that's being installed by the Sony Ericsson SDK. So now we click on finish, uh, close, just close NetBeans and restart it again. Yeah, uh, you have to do this. Otherwise, it will not refresh and it will not work and it will not deploy. And, you know, it's just mayhem. This is, uh, you know, old architecture, x86 architecture. You know how it works. So we're going to create a new project. Click there and now select Java Me. And from there, click on mobile application and just click Next. This will bring you a new um, screen selection so that you can target your folder location, your your project uh, folder in this case. And I had a lot of uh, compiling errors. This was because it set by default to documents and settings plus a very long name. It will give you errors. Please, please, please deploy everything to your C drive and just, you know, a short name folder. In my case, I just wrote my midlets. So I, I bid you to do the same. Uh, it's shorter. It will work. Everything will, you know, be just tight and neaty and neat. Click next. And now it's going to ask you, okay, what will be the default platform for this midlet? And here you have the debug on device. If you have your device connected or the platform emulator, which is the one that we're going to choose. Now I'm going to switch to Sony Ericsson W. 600. You can choose any other emulator and it will work as well because all of these AIPs are compatible with all of these devices from Sony Ericsson. Now, I have encountered people who told me you should create uh, for Java Nokia, but that's another video. Anyway, so let's go with these uh, settings, which are by default the ones that are, are active from the device uh, virtual profile. And then just click Finish. This will create your project and the default 
emulator will be the Sony Ericsson. And finally, we've arrived to a simple hello world. You can see on the left side that I have my project organization and to the middle section, I have different tabs, flow, analyzer, screen. To the right, I have palette where I can just drag and drop components into my screen tab and they will be created as well. You can just drag them here and drop them over here. Now we're going to click this uh, build button. This is clean and build, which means basically clear out the log and then just, you know, create uh, or compile the midlet. You can also create an additional configuration inside the project, but in our case, since we already defined it and we already said that it was going to be the Sony Ericsson emulator, you can find all of the properties right here. I know this is kind of technical, boring stuff. There, <laughs> believe me, there is a lot of a lot of sweat and tears in this. Exactly one year and a half working alone in this. Anyways, after you click build, it's going to show you, the log is going to show you that it has been built successfully. Now, if you click play, which actually compiles this thing for the first time, it will trigger the emulator and Windows is going to tell you, hey, do you want to unblock this? Then you should click unblock. This is very important, otherwise it will never work again. So make sure that you unblock these calls and finally you can see your first hello world midlet right there on the screen. This is fantastic. Now you can create any sort of test, any sorts of midlets, push the buttons, everything will work according to this virtual device profile. This is just great. All right, so this has been the introduction to establish the development environment for J2Me 3D objects, in this case, or 3D games. Now, don't forget that all of this came from really big companies at the time, like Sony and um, from other companies in the UK, Japan, Italy. I mean, everyone was really doing their most prominent work in these days to showcase how powerful the 3D graphics and animations and, you know, keeping people engaged in their devices could be like how far they could reach with these limited devices. My name is Pierre Schiller and I hope you have liked this episode. And if you have, please let me know in the comment section below so I know that I can continue to create this series showing you how to create at least basic graphics using 3D and ChatGPT or AI advantages that we now have. So therefore, if you like this episode, please let me know. And don't forget to follow me and subscribe so that you will get notifications immediately after a video is uploaded. Also, please share because this is important. You have at your fingertips the possibility to create amazing new retro video games. Thank you very much.